This portion of the Ray Lucia Show is brought to you by Pipeline Oil and Gas and is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to promote or sell securities nor give legal, tax, or investment advice. There are many risks associated with investment in oil and gas, including the loss of principal. Private placements in oil and gas are available only to accredited or qualified investors. Pipeline Oil and Gas is not endorsed by this network, the local stations, or the talk show hosts. Hey, welcome back, folks. This is the Ray Lucia Show. Glad you're here. 877-PLANNER is the number. You heard the disclaimer. That's the uh, intro. I wish I could make it a little, you know, easier to tolerate, Brandon Cox, but it is very nice. Yeah, well done, Roy. <laughs> uh, we, we, we obviously have Brandon on every week. We talk about oil and gas. In fact, we've got to run from this program to catch a flight because we're heading out to Louisiana this weekend, are we not? Uh, we're going to go check out some of those, uh, you know, oil and gas wells you have? Yeah, we're going to see the risk up close and in person, <laughs> right? I sound like a real scary guy before I come onto the show, right, because of the, the disclaimers. But I understand that it's, it's a necessity. And, hey, you know what? Risk, you're never going to get away from it, so why not embrace it? There's risk in everything that you do. And for accredited investors only, this type of an investment can represent something that is uh, is actually pretty attractive, especially in light of where oil prices have been and possibly where they're going. Johnny Dean, I don't know if you just heard us, but Johnny Dean and I were just talking. You have bonds at record highs. You have stocks at record highs. You have small caps at record highs. You got everything at record highs. And so it's nice to have something in the portfolio that isn't going to correlate at least positively with everything that's happening in the markets today. I think you've got something like that. Yeah, I mean, oil and gas definitely fits the profile that you're talking about. Uh, you know, we've all been hearing about the Iraq situation over the last couple of weeks. And me personally, I don't think it's as bad as what everybody thinks it is. Uh, otherwise, prices would be a lot higher. Uh, but they continue to sit kind of idle. So, you know, the media does a great job of getting people really excited. But again, it only costs us about 35 bucks to produce every barrel of oil. So whether prices are at 110 bucks a barrel or 100 bucks a barrel, we're still in a pretty good spot. Okay, I want to talk about that because uh, I, I've spoken with other individuals in your industry, and it seems as if those that are drilling in other places uh, and they, they've got to drill sideways, fracking, and all that other stuff, uh, their costs, you know, the the uh, the pump jacks and all that stuff. Some of those wells cost, you know, several million dollars. So so how can you uh, get oil out of the ground for 35 bucks? That just doesn't make sense to me. Well, I mean, it's, it just comes down to the, the region of the country that we're in. Which is I mean, Louisiana. Louisiana, yeah. right? Uh, and you have the natural porosity of the Gulf Coast region. Now, we're onshore. Nothing we do is offshore. Uh, so you have basically the God-given perfect scenario of what the guys up in North Dakota or some of these other parts of the country are trying to create themselves and that's where the fracking comes in because you have the tight rock formations up there and you have to separate the rocks so the oil has a path that it can travel to get into the uh, well bore and get up to the surface. Louisiana we're blessed to already have that so that's how we can save and keep our costs down where the other guys are having to not only go deeper which adds to the cost but then logistically from a fracking standpoint that all runs up the cost so therefore they're, it, it's twice as much to produce a barrel, and then you throw in the environment that they're drilling in, which is North Dakota. I saw the forecast this year, and one day they had the high for negative 30 degrees. That's, that's the high. <laughs> Who wants to work in those conditions? Although I've been in Louisiana, and it's not so much fun in August either. Well, it's not, and if, if you're made out of sugar, you probably won't survive the, <laughs> you know, the, the rain that's down there, the humidity, but none of us are, and we're built for it out there, and because of, again, the terrain that's already there, it drains. There's pretty good drainage in the locations that we're at. So it doesn't bother us as much uh, as what some might think if, if they're not educated on what's going on out there. All right, well, speaking about educating, I want to educate people on the risks. This is really important because I know there are some uh, uh, risk mitigation techniques that you use. One of those the government gives you for free, and that is an income tax deduction. So you've got an intangible drilling cost deduction. Let's say it's 80%. So if I have $100,000, I put hundred grand into some investment, I get an $80,000 deduction. If I'm in a 40% tax bracket, I save $32,000 in taxes. So right off the bat, I've got $68,000 invested for a $100,000 uh, 
uh, investment actually going to work for me, correct? That's exactly right. When you talk about risk, you could almost flip-flop out of the oil field and go, well, my risk paying that taxes to the IRS is I write them a check knowing I'll never see a penny of that you know, because I got to pay my tax bill. If they invest it with us, then your, your options, there's a lot of upside because, again, you have the opportunity to have a successful project where you have the oil being produced, which creates a revenue for you each month. But again, let's just say we go out there and we screw up everything. And, and I'm wrong everywhere we plan on being right. The worst case scenario with us is still better than somebody writing a check to the IRS because with us, if it's a dry hole and we don't find anything, it's a 100% tax deductible situation the very first year, which still lowers your taxable income. So that check you have to write to the IRS is still less than even if you don't get into the oil and gas field. So that's why you know, risk is all relative. There's risk in the oil field, sure, but there's a lot of risk outside of the oil field. Uh, no doubt about it, but uh, clearly what people want is they want something that gives them tax benefits, that gives them the opportunity to get income on a tax-preferred basis because some of the income is sheltered uh, when you do get oil. Uh, they, they clearly would like to get all their money back and a return on that investment. Now, as you said, we're not trying to minimize the risk. We want to be fair and balanced here as best we can. But you've had some pretty good success in helping people get the money back on a relatively short period of time. That's certainly not guaranteed by any stretch. But talk about some of your successes in the past. Well, I mean, in the oil and gas field, you don't get too up or too down. I mean, naturally, I'm an optimist, and I, I like to see the positive in every situation. Now, you know, we've had wells where we expected them to come on around 30 or 40 barrels because our average well out there comes in around 40 to 60 barrels. Now, our latest well that came on a few weeks ago, you know, again, we were thinking 30 to 40, and it came on at 60. Now, it's, it, it doesn't happen like that every single time, but naturally we're conservative in our projections and what we anticipate because, again, we want to under-promise, over-deliver. So we never get too excited because you're only as good as your last well. And, and when people want to look at our track record, that's great, but the thing we have to remind folks of is, Every well, every project is unique and different. So that's like saying one of your children is like this, and they're all going to be like that. And we all know if you have kids, it, they're all different and unique, and that's the same way with the pump jacks out in the oil field. You know, what I love about this guy, Brandon Cox, is he's straight up with you. There's no pitching here. And that's what I dig about it because I shouldn't have said dig because that's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> we're going out to the oil fields, and we're leaving momentarily. We're actually going to be filming a documentary on this very subject to help people learn more about it because what Brandon believes in, what I certainly believe in, is education. And so if you want to find out more, go to PipelineOilAndGas.com. Pretty soon we'll have a DVD that you can get and all kinds of stuff on the website. But give out your phone number real quick, Brandon. I just go to the website. Sign up for the free white paper as well, okay, written by cool. Chris Jarvis, PipelineOilAndGas.com. PipelineOilAndGas.com, or you can call him. He'll take your call. Give me that number again, 800 996 Three six nine zero. We'll talk to you next week uh, on the rebound from the oil and gas business. Take care. This is the Ray Lucia Show. I'll be right back. The Ray Lucia Show.